Professor Pace is, uh, is online and live. Okay, so we can, we can start. Uh, so uh, uh, welcome everybody to this uh, symposium. Uh, it's a pity that uh, we cannot be in, uh, in Padua with uh, Gerardo. Uh, so please Gerardo have a spritz also for us. And uh, at the same time, uh, it's, uh, it's also a pleasure uh, to be uh, with you connected online. And uh, I thank you, I thank the organizers for allowing the, this opportunity so that we can, uh, we can share our research and our insights uh, also from, uh, from a distance. Uh, of course, I, I thank uh, Professor Pasha for uh, having accepted to be our discussant. And uh, I thank uh, all the colleagues that uh, have uh, accepted to, to participate uh, in this symposium. Um, as you can read from the, from the title, of course, the topic is uh, employability. Um, it's a topic that uh, uh, has uh, increased in scholarly attention in, uh, in recent years. Uh, through, the develop in, uh, through the development, for instance, of uh, several theoretical models, and it is a topic also that um, has attracted the attention of uh, scholars from this, this uh, from different uh, angles. I mean, uh, psychologists, but also um, organizational behavior, uh, managerial sciences, uh, higher education, uh, and so on. Uh, um, to the best of my uh, knowledge and experience. Uh, this is uh, the first uh, uh, symposi symposium uh, focused uh, in recent years, the, the first symposium uh, focused on the uh, psychometric assessment of uh, uh, measures of, uh, uh, of, um, of uh, employability measure, employability scales. So it's a pleasure to uh, having gathered this uh, significant uh, a, a group of uh, scholars uh, interested in such issue, in, in, in this issue. Uh, to mo today we'll, uh, we will have uh, uh, four, um, four, four presentations. Uh, the first one will be by Gerardo Pret Petruzziello and colleagues uh, uh, from the University of uh, Bologna, and uh, we'll focus on uh, perceived employability. Uh, the second one will be uh, from uh, Eleonora Picco and other colleagues from uh, Milano Bicocca University and uh, uh, will be focused on the sustainable employability. Then uh, we have the pleasure to have uh, some uh, uh, colleagues from Poland and in particular uh, Professor Piotr Mamkarz and colleagues from the uh, Catholic University of Lublin, which uh, will focus on self-perceived employability, the scale by Andrew Rothwell. And finally, uh, I will present a contribution about resource-based employability. So it is a pleasure to provide a, a, a wide array of uh, employability scales uh, so that we can also compare the pros and cons of uh, these different uh, uh, measures. Uh, we will have... Uh, about uh, we have we have we are uh, we have plenty of time, so we will have about fifteen minutes of of time for each presentation, and in the end uh, we will uh, listen to Professor Pache uh, reflections and uh, com comments, suggestions, and uh, and so on. Uh, okay, so I will stop uh, sharing my screen. Okay. And uh, I will uh, leave uh, the, the stage uh, to uh, Gerardo and colleagues. Thank you and welcome again to our symposium. Thank you, Alessandra. Just give me a couple of seconds to share my presentation, which I hope you all can see here and uh, online. Uh, I think that, that you all can see. Uh, thank you, Professor Lopresti. Good uh, afternoon, everyone, here and online. Uh, I'm Gerardo Petruzziello, Research Fellow uh, from the University of Bologna. First of all, thank you, Professor Lopresti, for inviting us. Uh, thank you, Professor Pace, for uh, discussing our works. And I also would like to thank my co-authors in this study which is about the uh, methodological approach in measuring 
perceived employability of university students. Uh, I do not want to bore you, but uh, I need I am the icebreaker, so I need to, to do a little theory just to recall something of what is perceived employability. We all know that perceived employability is one of the major psychological resources that uh, new entrants in the labor market may have to support a sustainable transition to work uh, because it is basically something that help us to feel in control of the environment and research has shown that is connected with positive subjective and objective outcomes of the transition to work and it is basically the self-perceived uh, employment potential the easiness to get a job, the possibilities to the possibility to get a job, basing basing uh, essentially on the self appraisal of these personal and contextual resources, and just because it is considered a subjective process, the perception of something that that gives me the feeling that I have the strength and the power to to get a job. Uh, research has mainly used throughout the years uh, self-report measures. Uh, here I report two of the most used uh, skills in, in uh, perceived employability research among new entrants. Of course, this is the original formulation for students and graduates. These have been, um, have been adopted, but there are plenty of scales, such as the scale from Professor Lopresti, the multidimensional scale of uh, Professor Roswell and so forth, uh, but uh, researchers as, and scholars throughout the year have questioned this modality of assessing perceived employability and for uh, having a proof of this, it is sufficient to read and at almost any limitation section of any paper about perceived employability. Uh, scholars require a multi-rater approach in the evaluation of perceived employability in the assessment of perceived employability. And why they have, have they called for such an integration of uh, different raters of uh, employability of new entrants in the labor market? Of course, to overcome methodological problems, such as the emergence of common method bias, uh, imagine new entrants that, that, that they answer questions about their employ employment potential and they want to look better than they are or they just uh, answer questions because they have implicit theories about what the questioner is, is asking them. And of course, having a more precise estimation of employability is useful to have more solid results about the relationship between perceived employability and outcomes, of course. But there is another question, a conceptual question, uh, uh, issue. Uh, employability, employability development, the opportunities that new entrants may have during the trajectories of their transition to work is strictly bounded to the perception of employability that significant others have about them. Think about hiring managers, think about graduate recruiters, think about uh, career counselors. They make their decision based on the perception of employability of new entrants, basing on the signals that new entrants send to them about their employability, uh, how they communicate the quality of their education, uh, their potential in terms of performance and so forth. But if we also look at students and graduates, of course, we also need to be aware that their uh, trajectory during the transition to work is also bounded to the social support that they receive from, their, uh, from the people around them. Think about family members, think about peers or uh, romantic partners and so forth. There are uh, a lot of papers and one from Professor Lopresti also that talks about the family employability support. And of course, this support is based on the perception that these people around students and graduates have of their employability. So it is useful to integrate 
different views of employability. And there is not much research about this multi-rater approach. Uh, Professor Beatrice van der Heyden and colleagues have, uh, has, uh, have shown that uh, with samples of adult workers, of course, that uh, their concept of employability holds across groups and uh, the perception are, are con congruent. But they also found discrepancy in terms of the relationship between employability and career success outcomes, such as career satisfaction. So basing on the fact that there is the need to integrate and to apply this multi-rater approach, and basing on the fact that there is no much research about this, we aimed at comparing self and other perceived employability of university students, and uh, we had the final goal of informing the methodological approach that could be used in the measurement of perceived employability during this developmental stage. We uh, correlated self and other perceived employability uh, each other and with indicators of human capital such as soft skill. And we also tested the relationship between career engagement and perceived employability. Uh, we involved 315 uh, students from the University of Bologna, and we asked them to choose one person of their choice among their family members, partners, friends, um, to complete an online questionnaire asking these significant others to provide an estimation of their employability. Uh, Pertaining to the sample composition, participants were, uh, it was a, a slightly majority of men, but a large majority of students coming from scientific technological field. And in terms of significant, significant others that provided their estimation of employability, uh, the majority was composed by friends with a slightly majority of women. Uh, we measured soft skills with a ADOC created scale uh, based on the eight great competencies model, uh, career engagement with an adapted scale from Hershey and colleagues, and for perceived employability and self and other perceived employability, we adopted the Italian adaptation of perceived employability scale by Bertson and Mark Lund. And uh, let's go to the study and to the results. We uh, conducted a correlational analysis in which we performed correlations between self and other perceptions of employability scores and correlations between self and other uh, employability scores uh, with indicators of human capital, in this case, soft skills, of course. And we tested the uh, relationship between career engagement and self and other perceived employability. In the general sample, we found that there was no relationship between self and other perceptions of employability, which is quite unexpected. And uh, we found that self-perceived employability correlated positively with the with most of the indicators of soft skills, uh, but this was not the case for other perceptions of employability. If we go, if we decompose the results basing on the subgroups um, divided by the type of relationship with our participants, we can see that other perceptions of employability were negatively related with decision-making skills. I go very fast to, uh, through these results. I can go back to them later. And if we look at perceived employability um, um, rated by, by peers, by classmates, we can see that other perceptions of employability were uh, negatively related with problem solving skills. And uh, if we look at the relationship between career engagement and perceived employability, we can also see that career engagement indeed has a relationship, positive relationship with self-perceived employability, 
but not with other perceived employability. So uh, let's analyze these results and let's discuss these results. Um, the fact that self and other perceptions of employability was quite unexpected because it was not aligning with the existent uh, research. Um, and it was quite surprising that we found that other perceived employability was related negatively with soft skills such as decision making and problem solving. And uh, this left us wondering about the real ability and the validity of other perceptions of employability. Uh, we involved uh, a sample of people who may not have been familiar with the labor market and with the demands of the labor market. And maybe these people were not fully capable to understand or to make a good interpretation of the signals that their dear ones send to them about their employability. So this must be the case, but based on this perception, people around students and graduates provide career development support, provide action. So we may wonder, is the type of support that people around students and graduates, family members, peers, and so forth, uh, is actually the type of support that university students and graduates need because it is based on perceptions that may be distorted. So this is the question that, that, that we uh, ask future research to, 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 to answer. Uh, of course, our study had limitation. We used a cross-sectional design. We performed correlational analysis. Uh, we did not involve perceptions of employability coming from those who are instead expert and familiar with the labor market, such as employers, uh, graduate recruiters, career counselors, teaching staff in universities and so forth. And we did not test it, the relationship between perceived self and other perceived employability with other resources, which may be influential of um, employability perceptions, such as cultural capital. Cultural capital has been shown to be highly influential of the perceptions that others may have of my employability. Uh, so for uh, giving, let, let's give some take home messages for future research. Of course, we invite future research to use this integration of multi Rater, this multi-rater approach and multi-rater sources uh, with a longitudinal design in order to capture the interplay between self and other perceptions of employability, career development actions, self-initiated and endorsed by others, and transition outcomes. We also suggest future research to explore this a multi-rater approach by using not only the scale that we have used here, the five item scale, but also multi-dimensional scale, such as those from Rothwell and colleagues, Lopresti and colleagues, or career resources scale and so forth. And lastly, for both research and practice, we ask for a triangulation of employability estimations because we know that individuals' estimation of their own employability may not be correct, fully correct. Uh, significant others' estimation of employability may not be correct, but this may also happen with employers. Also employers, of course, may have biased uh, estimations of new entrants' employability. So we call for a triangulation, for having more realable um, estimations of employability to understand the employability potential of new entrants, the employability radius, and of course, to, to provide them with the uh, actions uh, for a realable uh, career development sport. And that's it.
thank you. Uh, thank you for those who are here. Thank you at home. I hope that you all have had the possibility to, to hear my presentation. Thank you very much, Gerardo. Uh, it was very interesting. Um, is uh, maybe we can have time for a couple of questions be before moving uh, on uh, to the following uh, presentation. Uh, I will start uh, myself because uh, uh, it was very interesting to listen to your presentation um, because yes, we have a lack of uh, studies uh, examining uh, um, other uh, based evaluations of uh, employability and uh, it was nice to 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 find out your study um well i i have i have two questions but the first question is not a real question i was wondering uh, who are who, who were more right i mean uh, the <laughs> the individual self evaluation or uh, the others uh, the the other based evaluation but of course uh, we we can we are not able to find out this uh, uh, the, the answer to this question. So um, my other question, uh, which is more uh, <laughs> more real, more uh, more plausible, is: uh, um, Have you wondered to uh, uh, to uh, complement this study with uh, a qualitative one, for instance, uh, uh, um, integrating with some in in with some interviews uh, involving the Diaz? So the individual and the other people, the other person who evaluated the ease of her employability to, uh, to check, uh, to better check uh, the, uh, the, the reasoning be behind uh, their evaluations. Because uh, of course, uh, for instance, uh, and maybe it is also a, 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 the, one of the reasons be between these uh, discrepancies, uh, we know that usually students have uh, uh, not a good uh, reality check about the uh, employability levels. Uh, so maybe uh, some interviews uh, uh, could uh, contribute to shed more light on uh, the reasons be behind these uh, discrepancies. Thank you. Thank, thank you for, for the question. This is a very interesting question. And, and maybe the first question that you have is connected with the second one because maybe with a qualitative part of the study, it is possible to understand the line of reasoning behind the estimations of employability, and um, and this can can help us at that, that, that apply our lenses as experts to understand what is the most correct light of um, um, line of reasoning. Uh, on this, this data uh, were collected uh, like f around uh, between five and six years ago. Uh, we did not perform a uh, qualitative part because our participants were involved in a, in a program for the development of soft, soft skills. So uh, for, for, for organizational constraints, uh, we, we could not perform this kind of, of inquiry. But of course, this, this, this is useful. And this could be useful not only to do one time in a single shot, but also um, with, with, a, with a longitudinal design. So I apply the, the longitudinal design also to the qualitative part, because as you rightfully said, uh, perceptions of employability uh, tends to, um, to, to have, have a, have a um, are, are very, very variable across time and can change. And so it would, it would be useful to, 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 to uh, perform a qualitative, a qualitative study to compare the line of re reasonings behind, um, behind the estimations of employability between students and of course the, the significant others uh, also to understand which are the factors that uh, these people use the most to base, to base their perceptions of employability. And this could uh, also help us to understand, um, to understand which uh, is the most important factor that 
students and their dear ones use to, to, to provide their estimation of employability, which also pertains to the perception of what employability actually is and what employability can lead them to. Uh, I don't know if I answered your question, but the, the short answer is no, we did not perform. But of course, um, in, in, in keeping on investigating this matter, it is necessary to perform our qualitative analysis. And latest research about this topic uh, shows us that, that the qualitative part is, is necessary because the concept of employability itself is, is changing. Uh, we are in a post-pandemic uh, stage, in a post-pandemic year, so what is employability is changing, so a, a qualitative part is, is of course uh, needed and useful. Sorry if I talk too much. Sorry. Thank you, thank you. Is there uh, any other question for uh, Dr. Patriziello? Yes. Uh, according to you, uh, have you uh, identified a bias uh, with the, the, the self-introspection of uh, the, the subject? Uh, because it's not an easy thing to know ourselves. And uh, so the, the, the self-employability uh, is not an easy uh, uh, task to, uh, uh, to keep. So, uh, with the self-report uh, inventory, maybe uh, there will be uh, some bias who, uh, who can uh, uh, so, uh, dis disagree the, the measurements. Yeah, um, of course, we, we, uh, it is, we are aware that there are some, some uh, self-observations that we cannot capture with these five items. And I think that uh, if we connect my answer to Professor Lopresti before with uh, the answer to your question, uh, the, the qualitative part is even more necessary because we need to understand how students came to their self-perception of employability because employability, uh, there is a line of research that says that employability is something that is social constructed. So I build my employability based on the fact that maybe I can discuss to you about uh, the labor market or about the job opportunities. And this may elicit a, a, an internal process that leads me to think that I'm employable, employable or not. So the, the qualitative part is even more necessary to capture these self-observations. And I don't think that quantitative uh, measurements about the capacity to, to self-explore, for instance, are uh, completely um, uh, are enough to do this. A qualitative part is necessary. Well, this is a, a co-construct answer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, we, 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 um, yeah. The, the, the short answer is yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I don't want to, to, to take time away from the other presenters. Maybe we can. Yes, uh, with pleasure. Yeah, yeah. We, we need to move to the second presentation. Thanks for the questions. And uh, it's time for uh, um, Dr. Pico and uh, colleagues. Yes, here I am. I hope you can all hear me from home and also from uh, Padua. Uh, yeah, it's, it's really a pity not being there, but I really want to thank Prof. Lopresti and the Prof. Pace and the, all the people connected here. I'm going to share the screen. Probably uh, you have to give me this possibility. I don't know if I can in this way. Maybe I, yeah, I'm not uh, able to do that yet. I don't know if Gerardo can help me for this. Yeah, I cannot hear you, Gerardo, but I think you... Uh, you sorry, uh, maybe you can now. So try to, uh -huh. to share your screen because... Yeah, okay. yeah, now I can. Thank you very okay. much. Well... We can see your screen and your presentation. Perfect. Perfect. That's very good. 
Yeah, I'm going to present a study on the development of the capability index plus uh, the assessment of sustainable employability network association. Uh, that's the joint study from uh, two group of researchers, one from the University of Milan Bicocca, so including me as a new postdoc researcher, and uh, the other group from INAIL, that is the Na Italian National Institute for Insurance Against Accident at Work, including all the other names you can see on, on this slide. Um, just um, a couple of background words. So uh, where did we start? Uh, well, by considering that nowadays, everyone is of course seeking for getting and maintaining a job uh, over time, uh, but at the same time, um, by meeting at least two conditions. So first by meeting uh, personal values and goals and possibly achieving meaning through his or her job. And the second one is by contributing to his or her health, but also to the health of the organization. And these two aspects are both important from the uh, society perspective, as we, of course, need a work workforce, uh, work longer and healthier uh, till, till the pension age, but also from the personal perspective, as we increasingly recognize uh, a new centrality of work for our lives and for uh, societies. So uh, taking all these aspects uh, in mind, uh, we consider sustainable employability as a set of capabilities or opportunities uh, in terms of valuable work. So, for example, related to skills development, health uh, preservation, uh, the obtainment of good performance over the long term. And finally, opportunity to obtain good functionings, uh, both for the employee and for the organization we work for. And uh, of course, uh, to get and to develop this set of extensive capabilities, uh, we also need uh, extensive personal and contextual resources. So for example, our workability or uh, the characteristics of our task and uh, at the job. Uh, and uh, we not only this, we also need other personal work and organizational factors that can convert, uh, according to Warden Kling and colleagues, uh, these existent uh, resources into uh, the set of capabilities. And in the model, you can see also an important role uh, from the choice um, that refers basically to the opportunity of the employee to choose whatever to exploit his or her capabilities uh, in order to obtain the outcomes he thinks are more valuable to him and to his or her organization. Uh, so uh, what's where we are regarding research sustainable employability? Well, actually, there is no unique agreement on its definition yet. And as a consequence, also uh, its measurement uh, is still not univoc. Uh, there are some uh, measured instruments, uh, but the majority uh, focus on mm, evaluating one of the dimensions of sustainable employability. So, for example, they, are, they focus on the health dimension or the valuable work dimension, uh, capturing uh, this uh, aspect related to the um, having a good income on developing skills. And furthermore, other objectification of the other elements in the sustainable employee model uh, do not exist yet. And uh, the verification on the position or the mutual position of these elements in the model is not so test it's, uh, yet. So what we, we want to, to do, well, we try to develop uh, a new instrument that we call the capability index. And we wanted to test its adequacy uh, in identifying all the, the, the relevant dimension of sustainable employability. And secondly, we also wanted to explore the organization of other sustainability elements in the model. So, in order to do so, uh, we collected uh, two samples, uh, two convenience samples. The first one, including 197 workers, uh, mainly women and also quite highly educated, so at university education, and the majority were also white scholars with a main age of around 40 years old. Uh, the majority also had a fixed term contract. 
while the second sample was uh, intentionally uh, quite different in particular, as here we involved 123 uh, entertainment professionals. So um, the majority were actors, singers, dancers, or performers. Uh, again, quite highly educated, especially very specialized within their, their field. Uh, here, the majority uh, was men, and uh, again, their age was around 40 years old. Uh, but here, uh, the majority of them had an occasional collaboration counter, so not the really classic fixed term, and also had, uh, in the majority of the case, another occupation outside uh, of the artistic field. So, uh, and, and of course, we developed the instrument, the capability the index, uh, by following several steps. So we first decided to adapt uh, some existing instruments, uh, especially for what concerns the health dimension. And we also develop uh, newly, new, new items. Um, we evaluated these items, so by means of a group of researchers and experts who independently, uh, yeah, actually, evaluated all these items and selected the most appropriate. And uh, we conducted a pilot test, so uh, interviewing 14 employees of various age, gender, and profession, and uh, using a think aloud protocol. And by uh, doing this, we could uh, adapt the unclear or ambiguous word or item, uh, check for the usability or the response scales, and avoid it, uh, the constant repetitions. So with the final version of the our capability index, and by using uh, the first sample we, we collected and we saw, uh, we conducted a principal component analysis. Uh, here you can see uh, the results. Um, we just reported the highly saturated, uh, the highly, yeah, the, the item with the highly uh, factor loading, so you cannot see all the items, but uh, you can see uh, that the capability index actually uh, capture uh, the four um, dimensions, so the four um, uh, classes of capabilities we were expecting. So the first class uh, refers to the health capabilities, and um, it actually captures uh, the perception of achievability of some aspects such as uh, taking care of health while maintaining the job, but also preserving health while working. The second dimension was valuable work uh, capability, and this um, precisely refer uh, to the, the feeling of um, the job to be recognized as important to our organization, the organization and the employee, and also to feel in harmony with our organization. The third dimension was the productivity one. So here, it's uh, this dimension is specifically uh, referring to uh, the perception of having the right competencies to perform the job and also to achieve uh, the assigned work goals, and even con uh, contributing in choosing these work goals. And the last dimension was related to the long-term uh, perspective capabilities. So here, um, assessing, let's say, the perception of, of um, having uh, the possibility to achieve all the previous aspects, but over the long term. So for example, the perception of keeping a job relevant to our organization, but over the long term. We also um, checked for the reliabilities that were all good. And we were for passed to a confirmative factor analysis uh, that we conducted by using the second sample we saw, so the one uh, including entertainment professionals. And here uh, we could confirm uh, the four uh, classes of capabilities we had found before. We had to delete a couple of items from the valuable work capabilities case, and probably we deleted items not really interconnecting the recognition of the organization to the employee. So we, we um, and we, we deleted, let's say, as related to the just uh, material recognition or the recognition just related to the person, not considering the, the organization, as you can see the, the items here. And we also checked for the fit indices that were all good and the key square was, uh, was significant. So what we did 
after was trying to develop an extensive uh, package. We call it the Sustainable Employability Assessment Package uh, by also following um, some several steps. Uh, so here again, we develop um, some new uh, um, items, but we also adapted some items from existing instruments. Here you can see some examples. And we use, uh, again, individual interviews and adapted the items uh, difficult items or unclear items. Um, I'm going to take uh, the scales better here in this uh, slide, as what we uh, aim to do here was um, try to get uh, the unique pattern of the association between all the variables uh, included in the sustainable employability model. And this uh, was done by conducting a network analysis uh, that is um, analysis very suitable for variables or construct at the system level as sustainable employability is in, a, in our model. Um, and this uh, analysis actually returns um, a graph uh, that is called the Gaussian graphical model. This is the one you can see on, on this slide on the, on the, on the right. Um, and again, uh, a couple of information, let's say the, the circles uh, are the nodes or the variables that we theoret theoretically decide uh, to include in our model, while the lines uh, are actually the, the links or the edge, uh, so they are the, the associations um, between the variables. These are conditional, so this means that um, every association is conditional on all the others. And the blue lines represent the, the positive association, while the red the, the negative. And let's say that the, the thicker the line, uh, the stronger the, the association. Um, just um, as methodologically speaking, we also, of course, checked for the network stability and robustness, and these were, were good. Uh, so we, we could interpret our network as, as quite stable, and we could infer for some relationships in the, in the model. So what did we find? Actually, we found, uh, let's say, a rhombus shape, uh, a rhombus-like shape um, in our in the center of the model that was positively positively connecting all the uh, capabilities. So, the valuable work capabilities, the productivity capabilities, the health capabilities, and the long-term perspective capabilities. And furthermore, we also uh, found um, two more, at least two more uh, groups of variables. In the upper part of the model, uh, we saw that productivity capabilities, so related to having the right competencies to adequately perform at work, and valuable work capabilities, uh, so mainly related to skills development and the perception of having a good harmony with the organization, were especially connected with an individual group of variables uh, that was positively associating um, as outcome, outcomes the job satisfaction and the job performance of employees with uh, an important individual level factor that was intrinsic motivation. Here you can see probably just the, uh, not the full name, main name, but I hope my, my voice can help you. So the motivation related just to the autonomous motivation to, to, to perform our, our work. While on the uh, bottom part of the model, we obtain an organizational, um, we, what we call the organizational group of variables, as this um, group was connecting the health and long perspective capabilities with uh, important organizational level factors. So actually, we found um, the sustainable employability policies. So the policy we consider as really taking into account a sustainable employment perspective, so organizational policies um, taking into account this vision and harmonizing human resource practices under this lens were associated, uh, positively associated with capabilities. And the same was for sustainable employability leadership, so related to healthy and engaging uh, leadership styles and also to work of balance aspects. So uh, related, for example, to the health climate at work, the possibility to balance these two aspects. 
And uh, interestingly, all these variables at the organizational levels, let's say in order to be connected to the individual outcomes, so the job satisfaction and performance, uh, they must, let's say, pass through the network and the connection of the capabilities. So, uh, the, and also we checked uh, for some uh, characteristics of the network. Um, the most uh, relevant characteristic for, um, uh, let's say, um, psychology networks are actually the strength and the predictability. So the one you can see here. Um, we saw that valuable work and health capabilities on one hand, and on the other hand, sustainable employability policies and sustainable employability leadership were um, the most um, strong, uh, so this were the strongest in, in terms of um, um, deepness of um, association between all the other variables and were also the most predictable. That's, that's the second graph. Uh, so uh, this it's refer actually to their practical potential. So the possibility to act on these variables to obtain an effect on the, the other variables. So uh, of course, the implication would be a lot. Uh, maybe I, I was a bit fast, but you, you can, uh, of course, uh, ask for qualification later. Um, here, what uh, we would like to stress uh, there are a couple of, of points. So the first is that capabilities, so sustainable employability, what is uh, what actually they better express sustainable employability, were pivotal in our network. So the most uh, the strongest and also most predictable in our network. So they had a central role. And they were connected both to personal um, level uh, characteristics, but also um, organizational factors by letting us um, see that sustainable employability system is actually multi-dimension and really characterized by the um, high complexity of uh, interaction between these factors and variables. And furthermore, uh, this is more a more practical consideration. If um, we want, uh, let's say, to obtain sustainable outcomes like employee performance on job satisfaction, we should flow through the development of um, a useful organizational policy in terms like sustainable employability policies and leadership, even more than as we were the strongest and most predictable, even more than motivational factors, probably, um, because this acts on the development of health and valuable opportunities, as we saw in the network. And regarding the model, the sustainable employee model, we also have to consider that probably we should really adapt it to different contexts and professions in order to specialize the employability construct. Um, of course, we do have a, some limitations, mainly related to the use of cross-sectional data and uh, to the fact that, of course, our findings cannot be generalized without, with, without, any, without some caution. Um, as of course, we should uh, repeat our validation in uh, bigger samples, in, including employees of various organizational contexts and even other countries, and uh, probably also assessing the longitudinal variable much more, so including, for example, interventions in the network, and of course, uh, different operationalization of the elements are also possible. Here, uh, we just want uh, to stress as a conclusion that in our market scenario, scenario, probably the sustainable employability approach is very useful uh, in revealing the weight and importance of work value, values and capabilities, and also uh, the complexity of, of um, the links and connection within personal and structural factors. As a consequence, the psychometric assessment of employee employability should take into account this perspective, keeping it in mind. So thank you very much for the moment. Thank, thank you, Eleonora. Um, we are uh, running a bit late uh, with respect to our timetable. And I know that uh, colleagues at, uh, in Padua uh, are running the risk to be imprisoned in the, <laughs> in the university building. 
So we need to be more focused and uh, to avoid any other uh, questions uh, before as the... As you know, me too, uh, as a problem here, <laughs> because my uh, everything is on fire, more or less. <laughs> near, my, near my building. Okay. Okay, so... <laughs> I have to go. <laughs> <laughs> so I leave uh, uh, the stage to, uh, to Professor Mamkart for the third presentation. Thank you. And we, evening, the, the encouragement and is uh, 15 minutes. Uh, uh, maximum. Okay, I, I would try. Thank you very much uh, for uh, this opportunity to be a, a part of this great event uh, symposium. Um, I will try to be sticking to the time so uh, the dinner will be uh, um, still hot uh, and, and, and uh, fresh for everybody who is uh, on site. Um, okay. And do you see the presentation uh, table? Yeah. Okay. So thank you, uh, uh, Professor Silva, for a very deep uh, and 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 well prepared background for perceived employability. So I can uh, skip this part. But uh, employability has become a key um, priority and measure of quality of, of universities because I want to stick to this concept uh, context of universities. Uh, students uh, as a um, coordinator of, of course for all students on the first uh, year, I, I, I observe that we need a tool to assess employability as a, a set of skills, right, which we can use for um, developing some kind of interventions um, uh, which can help students to be, feel, feel more and perceive themselves as more and um, effective and and uh, more uh, useful for the labor market. Uh, so um, uh, developing employability skills benefits students in several ways. Uh, generally, it gives them an advantage with employers, um, equips them, them with practical skills, um, like communication, team, team building, and also builds their confidence, right? Uh, through internships or uh, work experiences um, and helps them articulate their strengths. And this is why I was trying to find the best tool which I can use in um, uh, with my colleagues uh, in the university context. And we choose a uh, scale of self-perceived employability by um, Professor Rodwell. Uh, of course, we know that employability has is a multi-dimensional construct, but we were concentrating more on individual aspect of it. So how I perceive my skills, uh, how I, I self-assess myself, how I perceive myself, and what are my self-beliefs about uh, my skills. So we uh, try to adapt uh, this tool, make this kind of project to adapt, but we have to exclude uh, four items which we see not being rele relevant to the Polish context. Uh, and so the 16 item original scale was reduced to 12 item scale. It was similar done by a group from Spain and uh, also Germany. Uh, and we try to, of course, uh, understand uh, the uh, structure of this questionnaire. Uh, so the group of participants in our research were a group of 1,013 students. Of course, the group was um, bigger, but uh, um, some of data was removed because missing information or um, uh, we, we removed some uh, outdated uh, uh, data. Um, generally, the population represents uh, the tendency in, in studying some more women in Poland study, studies than the men. Uh, also, we have a group of 50% of people from uh, urban area and also 50% of people from rural area. Uh, the mean uh, age is 20.2 and 50% uh, of students uh, are, were employed uh, during this research. So it is also very important to notice. Um, the sample size uh, have confidential level of 95% and marginal of, uh, margin of error was 3.5% in this research. Uh, factor structure uh, was uh, delivered um, using, of course, um, factor analysis. And there are two options. First one was 
where, where we were uh, assembling the the uh, the construct, uh, we assumed three factors. But generally, the reliability of the third one was very low. Uh, so we decided to um, make uh, the two factorial analysis. And as you see here, the reliability is um, is good. Uh, when the two-factor solution um, explains 47 and, 50, uh, and 055 percent of this uh, construct, uh, the model feed we have to use uh, several uh, options, but generally um, we were stick. Oh, I, I I need to uh, tell something more. Uh, as you see here, we have to um, remove two uh, items because uh, the factor loadings were were similar. So it was not fitting the, the, the factor. Uh, we done a uh, structural modeling and the model fit was very well in this construct, um, in, this, in, in this concept um, of model. Uh, after uh, four weeks, we done a retest. So we done a test from the group of 100 students, uh, which we choose from the group of 1,000. Um, uh, and then we re repeat the measurements. And you see here, there are no differences uh, in between the groups after this time. And also, we were trying to establish the predictors um, um, of employability on that group. I will talk more about the limitations, because we have several limitations which you, we have to focus on. But we were trying to establish uh, predictors, which also be a part of uh, training of the students, right, of this uh, program. And it was a personality, uh, hope, right, procrastination and greed. And uh, we, I have to exclude two variables from uh, five-factor uh, personality uh, um, um, instrument because the variability was too low to use it as a uh, useful uh, measure of uh, agreeableness and open to experience. So we stick to ex extraversion, consciousness, emotional stability. Uh, regression analysis showed that the um, variables which we assess that will be a uh, good predictors of employability um, explain 21% of, of, of employability. Uh, generally, um, it's nice to notice that the uh, uh, emotional stability is not so involving in the relation um, uh, and one more thing, which is should be uh, noticed, the procrastination have only tendency to explain employability in this model, right? In the model four, uh, generally procrastination is, as a uh, as is uh, only one predictor. It's, it predicts also employability on the uh, good uh, level, and uh, this is a, a significant uh, um, predictor. Uh, what are the um, some kind of things to discuss and what we can sum up? Uh, generally, the, the the tool was adapted on the Polish uh, group of students. Um, generally, the group of students were young students, so it was, was students from the first and second year. Uh, and uh, the structure is uh, enough uh, or efficient to to measure this this construct in the group, uh, the scale, scales are reliable and there are no significant differences between reliability uh, in the test uh, retest uh, method. Um, regression ex showed that these predictors explain twenty one percent of variance, and um, the context which we were using this method, I think, is was very uh, well uh, prepared. Uh, so uh, we can also have some assumption about what can be done after the results. But there are several limitations and future research perspectives, which I want to share with you. First of all, the group was uh, limited in age and uh, geography. Uh, it's, uh, it's just a Polish sample, so we don't want to generalize these, the, the, these um, uh, results. Uh, we have comparison to uh, Spanish and uh, Germany um, uh, method adaptation. So we see the differences. And this is very interesting that although we are in the uh, almost the same part uh, of Europe, uh, we have a d different um, uh, results adapting this tool. Uh, what is it should be uh, analyzed more. It was just cross-sectional study uh, and the model required some 
error terms to be corrected to improve the fit. Uh, unfortunately, and the study focused on university students without uh, technical and medical science disciplines. And what we, we want to do more, uh, right now we are working on um, longitudinal study. So we want to uh, check if the employability uh, perspective of students change or self-perceptive. Uh, uh, perception change uh, uh, before uh, after the course, and we have a primary results uh, results, and I can say that it changed, but just in external level. So uh, this course don't deliver enough internal skills, which person internally percept that she or he have more skills than before the course, but they percept that they have more opportunities on the labor market than before the course. So this is another and uh, way to proceed uh, to find the way how they can how we can deliver the course that the students way they perceive that their skills and internal aspects of employability change uh, what is more important uh, also we can uh, we need larger sample and international sampling sample to see are the predictors are really uh, useful for predicting the employability for the general population or border population and of course, we're trying to find um, the way how we can use this tool um, to uh, also um, adapt it for a bigger population of of, of uh, Polish people. Uh, so we were uh, now working on the on the um, another version of of this tool and trying to use also different aspects uh, to measure employability to to cover all other dimensions which this tool does. Uh, thank you for your attention. I hope. I was very fast. If I, you have any questions, I'm ready to answer. Thank you very much. Thank you, Peter. Yeah, yes, it, you, you were very fast. And uh, I, I thank you for, for this. And um, uh, I will try to be very fast as well. So maybe there will be enough time for Professor Pasha for his discussion and maybe also some minutes for some questions uh, to uh, to you to to Leonora to me or to Gerardo before uh, before concluding our our session uh, before going to my presentation i will start uh, sharing the screen okay uh, i have two service uh, communications the first communication is that uh, i find out that uh, uh, the, um, uh, the the proceedings of uh, this uh, conference uh, have been published on a journal, uh, on a scientific journal, uh, and uh, uh, which is also indexed uh, on Scopus. So uh, right after my my presentation, I will uh, uh, paste the link to the to our uh, to the to the very issue of our proceedings in the chat so that you can download it. And um, the other service uh, communication is that uh, I, uh, with other two colleagues, uh, Tam Pam and William Donald, I have uh, recently uh, launched uh, a special issue on employability on a journal which is uh, called uh, Higher Education Skills and Work-Based work Learning, which is a special issue uh, called Four Papers uh, on Employability. The title is Employability and for and through Career Transitions. So, if you are interested, uh, uh, I can give you later uh, information. I, I I will try also to paste the link on the on the chat. Okay, so I will uh, try to 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 break the uh, to break uh, Peter record and be faster than him. My presentation, and uh, which is a study that uh, I carried out and prepared with uh, uh, Assunta de Rosa. Uh, okay, so. Um, uh, the, 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 the background uh, starts from the basic distinction between uh, output-based and input-based employability. Um, we, for instance, we, we know that uh, perceived employability is the, is the decor of uh, the output-based approach, while we also know that uh, there are several uh, uh, models uh, in regards to input-based employability, because input, in, while output-based is uh, your perception of being employable. Input based is about the perception of uh, the those factors that actually make you more or less employable, which is also the uh, the, the approach, the focus that uh, has been taken from the CDFOP, 
which is an European institution on uh, vocational about vocational training. Um, as I said, there are several models uh, uh, about uh, um, that, that are consistent with the input-based employability. Uh, the, um, we uh, probably all know the dispositional uh, employability model by Fugate and colleagues, uh, which uh, sees uh, uh, employability as a sort of uh, uh, dispositional factor. Uh, in, most in terms of adaptability and uh, other factors. Uh, we already uh, heard about uh, the, mod the, the very well-known model by Professor Van der Heyden and Van der Heyden, which is the competence-based employability model. And uh, uh, more recently, uh, a few years ago, uh, we, uh, I developed with another colleague uh, another model of employability called resource-based employability. Um, uh, in, in, in which I will explain uh, more uh, in, the, in the next slides. Uh, for uh, each of these uh, scale, uh, models, sorry, we have uh, available scales that have been used in, in, several, in, several, in several studies. Uh, so in regards to the resource-based resource employability model, uh, we uh, identified the four main clusters which are career identity and self-management, human capital and professional development, social capital and networking, and environmental monitoring. Uh, these uh, um, these uh, specific uh, factors are not original. I, I mean that we can find them, them in other, uh, other uh, input-based models, like the one by Fugate or uh, Van der Heyden, Van der Heyden, uh, and for the, the, mix, the mixture, between uh, the, the factors are differential. And in, in, in more specific terms, the peculiarities of these models are uh, free, free ones. The first one is that we focus not only on the actual possession of uh, aspects like, I don't know, human competences, but also on the propensity to further, to further develop them in the future. Uh, moreover, we do not uh, focus only on uh, factors under individual control, for, as for instance, uh, the development of uh, further knowledge or competences or the, the extension of the social network, but also on uh, in, uh, factors that are not uh, under the individual control, I mean the occupational context, in particular the awareness of, of the occupational context. These, are, these, uh, fact, these aspect is uh, uh, closer to the issue of uh, perceived employability, of course. And finally, it is a model which is not only focused on uh, employed uh, individuals, like, for instance, uh, the, the model by, uh, by Van der Heyden, Van der Heyden, but uh, it is also uh, suitable for uh, job seekers or people entering the labor market because uh, the, the questions are uh, declined in terms of uh, the ideal vocational plan. I mean that you can be employable, uh, uh, for instance, myself, I can be employable as a university professor, but uh, of course I will not be employable as uh, uh, an engineering, for instance, or an astronaut. So the, the questions are declined in terms of the ideal individual vocational, vocational plan. Um, we uh, tried to, to summarize all the, all the available psychometric evidence about this measure, which was developed, in, uh, which was developed four, four years ago. The majority of this uh, evidence uh, is based on uh, homemade studies, <laughs> if we can say so. Uh, so studies carried out in Italy, and uh, we always uh, found out that the re re reliability of the scale, which is a 28 scale, is, uh, is good. And uh, in this scale is also uh, associated, significantly associated with, with uh, uh, factors with variables that are significant uh, in terms of uh, vocational or occupational terms like uh, career success or proactive personality of job crafting or, or rigor. Uh, recently, uh, also, uh, we, the, the, the Portuguese uh, version has been validated and uh, uh, they found also some significant uh, positive correlation with career decision-making self-efficacy and career exploration self-efficacy. So this is the uh, status quo. 
And based on that, we uh, carried out three additional studies uh, in order to assess the um, psychometric uh, qualities, uh, characteristic of this, uh, of this scale. The first scale uh, aimed to examine the factual structure uh, and the factual invariance over time. Uh, it was carried out uh, on a sample of uh, uh, employed uh, people, of employees. We uh, uh, carried out the, uh, first of all, we examined the, in the, this is a longitudinal uh, study. We examined the factual structure of this, uh, uh, of this scale at both time one and time two. And we found that the four correlated uh, um, factual structure and the second order factual structures are almost equivalent. In what case, uh, in time one is better the four factor model, in time two is better the uh, second order uh, factor model. And uh, we relied on the second order factor model, which is the more comprehensive uh, uh, factoral uh, structure. And uh, the la later we, test the, we tested for the measurement invariance and we found out uh, uh, that uh, uh, we found out metric invariance of the scale. Um, <clears throat> so uh, uh, we found out that the, the loadings, uh, the factoral loadings of, of the items are uh, uh, stable over time, while we did not find a scalar and uh, we did not find any scalar invariance because uh, probably the, uh, the in intercept values of the scale and, and its items uh, vary across, uh, vary during, uh, varied during the time, uh, hopefully in terms of, of uh, an increase. The second study, uh, was uh, um, uh, aimed uh, to examine the association of this scale uh, with uh, um, some uh, uh, organizational antecedents, which are employability culture and perceived organization, organizational support for comp competence development. Um, the first scale, which is about a, an aspect of organizational culture, which is aimed at developing the employability of uh, employees, while the second uh, variable is more about uh, a perception of um, uh, organizational support focused on competence development. And uh, we also examine, examine the, the association of the scale with uh, the well-known measure by Professor Van der Heyden, Van der Heyden of competence-based employability. In this case, we of course uh, used another sample. We carried out, we uh, computed the uh, zero order correlations and we found out that uh, the two employability scales are significantly correlated, um, but not too much, which is a good, uh, a good news. So they are different, but uh, uh, at the same time, uh, significantly correlated. And we found also some significant, although not, not very strong, uh, positive associations with employability culture and perceived organizational support for competence development. They are rather similar for employability culture, while not uh, while in the case of the second variable uh, are weak in the weaker in the case of resource-based employability and stronger in the case of the other of the other uh, variable. Finally, the third study was uh, again uh, aimed at uh, evaluating the association of the resource-based employability scale with uh, um, competence-based employability scale by Professor van der, Heyden, uh, van der Heyden and perceived employability. And in particular, we were interested in, uh, in examining the association uh, with perceived employability and also checking if the, such an association was different than with respect to competence-based employability. Uh, you can find here some uh, information about the sample. Uh, what we found, again, we found uh, in this case a stronger association between resource-based employability and competence-based employability, which uh, is uh, maybe higher than expected. But uh, as you can see, uh, with respect to perceived employability, we found out that the association of uh, both employability scales are rather similar with respect uh, with perceived employability. So this is a, a good, uh, a very good news. Uh, well, uh, of course, the, uh, the, um, the, the conclusions are, uh, of this study are, uh, are uh, rather simple because it's a summary of psychometric evidence. So uh, we found out uh, um, additional evidence about the factual structure of, uh, of the scale. So the second order uh, four-factor model. 
We found out that we uh, also a measurement invariance in terms of metric invariance of this scale. Uh, we found uh, a good, uh, a good uh, a positive association with the competence-based uh, uh, measure of employability by, by Professor Van der Heyden in both study two and study three. Also significant associations with uh, some uh, significant, uh, um, some core organizational predictors of employability, which are employability culture and perceived organizational support of competence development. And uh, more importantly, we found out a significant and similar association with perceived employability than with the competence-based employability scale by Professor Van der Heyden. Of course, there are some uh, of course limitation. The stronger one is uh, self uh, the, the fact that we have self self report measures, and uh, we are, we currently we have data only uh, about uh, the Italian population. And uh, we 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 will try to overcome these limits limitations with uh, uh, future studies. Uh, well, I don't know if uh, I broke the Professor Piotr Mamkart's record, but uh, I'm uh, over with my presentation. Thank you, and uh, I leave now the stage to Professor Pasha for his final conclusions. Okay, I switch on my, my mic. Thank you. Thank you, Alessandro. Thank you to all of you for this invitation and uh, for inviting me to this symposium. And I, I listened uh, with, with great interest to everyone's contribution. And I think that each of the working groups that I have listened uh, uh, be, uh, will be able to advance our knowledge on this psychological and even social construct that seems to have such an important impact on functioning of the system in linking training and uh, higher education to careers. So uh, it's very interesting, in, even for the economists, as, as you know, uh, and I live in a department of economy where they talk about employability with um, some curiosity. So I will not make consideration right into the methodologies, methodologies used, uh, also because I believe that it can be more useful for a discussion to talk about the general contribution and aspect of the question that uh, maybe can remain open. And even uh, I think that you agree that to, to, uh, to have some question is, is good for us even to work more and more in, uh, in direction to uh, provide him even uh, answer. But uh, at the end of the presentation, I believe an example for the work of Petruzzello and, uh, and, and other, uh, for example, contributes to underline the importance, the, va the value of the external evaluation in, in that construct. Because I think that um, is a method of evaluation that can help even to solve some typical mm, mistrust in our studies uh, uh, that provide provided from all the science that to respect to the evidence of the work because they say okay it's just a simple perception of people about the employability but in this case we can add uh, older point of view i think that we can not, not um, uh, reach objectivity but i think that we can uh, provide more uh, evidence to the uh, to the the, the the employability as a as a social uh, uh, construct that can be useful in that uh, direction. The second work presented by the, they call it Pico uh, it was really interesting because uh, I think that this construct is not just. Uh, uh, a mainstream construct to talk about sustainability. I think that, uh, especially among the younger generation, uh, the to be employable, it seems just not to be to have a work, to have a career, to have power, but even to have uh, a good life, to stay uh, or to have a good a good career in the sense. So I think that can be useful to talk about sustainable employability. I I, I found it really interesting that construct, and uh, uh, I think that the direction in the young generation, but I think even in the old generation after pandemic period, 
it to providing more and more values to to, to find out to to uh, having more uh, meaning uh, meaning to the work of everyday work. So a sustainable sustainable uh, employability can be useful for understand more thus movement uh, toward the the careers. The last two contribution have the merit of making to tools to detect employability more in depth and uh, more suitable to national context and uh, the contribution of Mac Mars and the contribution of Oppressing all. But I think that uh, can be useful for all of us to having uh, more instruments in, the, in our nation, even to having more connection within us in the, in the context of the employability. So uh, thank you to all of you. I think that this can be um, useful is even to open, but I think that I, I have more questions at the end of the discussion, but uh, I think um, uh, I, I thank you for all of you. Thank, thank you, Professor Pasha. It's a pity that uh, we are uh, we have uh, run late, and uh, uh, the university building is going to close. And uh, I, anyway, I, I also take this occasion for uh, thanking uh, all of you again for. Uh, participating in this uh, symposium i pasted on the on the chat the, um, the 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 link to the proceedings so that you can download them and uh, also to the special issue that i mentioned at the bottom uh, well i it's a um, it's a very, very um, active uh, field of research, the employability one, and uh, we are happy to, to see all these contributions, in particular from young researchers that are uh, contributing to in the international debate. And uh, we hope to have the opportunity to meet uh, each other with each other again, perhaps uh, uh, in presence. And uh, I wish you uh, a good, uh, to enjoy your evening and uh, see you soon. Thank you for everything.